Mariko is one of those characters that has captured the hearts of viewers with her intelligence and loyalty. But beneath her composed exterior lies a deep well of pain and a desire for something more. In a pivotal moment, she begs Toranaga for permission to end her life through the ritual of seppuku. What drives her to this desperate ask? Join us as we explain the layers of Mariko's tragic past and explore the emotions that led her to this critical moment and what we can expect in the upcoming episodes. Welcome to this video, my name is Christian from In Premiere and let's begin. To fully understand Mariko's desire for death, we must explore deeper into her childhood and the events that shape her worldview. Raised in a samurai family, Mariko was instilled with a strong sense of duty and honor from a young age. She was taught to think about the needs of her family and her lord above her own desires and to accept her role in society without question. This instilled in Mariko a deep sense of obedience and self-sacrifice, qualities that would later contribute to her feelings of entrapment men and despair. Mariko's desire for death comes from a past force in tragedy and loss. As a daughter of the late Lord Ukeshi, she carries the burden of her father's legacy. Her father, once a respected samurai, was branded a traitor after assassinating the corrupt and tyrannical Lord Kuroda, the ruler of Japan before the Taiko. This act of rebellion led to the brutal execution of Mariko's entire family, leaving her as the sole survivor. Forced to witness the horrific death of her loved once Mariko has been haunted by the trauma of that day ever since. To atone for her father's action and ensure her own survival, Mariko was married to Toda Buntaro, a loyal samurai serving Toronaga. However, her marriage has been far from a source of peace. Buntaro, a skilled warrior but a harsh and unforgiving husband, has subjected Mariko for two years of emotional and physical abuse. Trapping a loveless and oppressive marriage, she feels like a prisoner. Her spirit is slowly being crushed under the weight of her circumstances. Mariko -sama, don't go to Osaka. My allegiance forbids me from doing anything else. But when the arrival of Blackthorn into her life, this serves as a point of no return to her own internal conflict. His defiance of social norms and his belief in individual freedom challenge the structures that have defined her existence. Blackthorn sees Mariko not as a wife or as a tool for political gain, but as a strong and capable woman worthy of respect and admiration. This recognition awakens a flicker of hope within Mariko, a desire for a life where she can be free from the pain of her past and the limitations of her present. Episode 6 of Shogun provides a crucial glimpse into her own formative years and the traumatic experiences that shape her worldview. The flashback to 1578, where a young Mariko is sent to live with the Lord Asai, reveals the brutality and political intrigue that surrounded her from a young age. Witnessing the execution of her father's allies, she's confronted with the harsh realities of power and the consequences of defying authority. This experience instills in her a deep-seated fear of rebellion and a belief that obedience and submission are necessary for survival. In episode 5, during a tense exchange with Blackthorn, the husband, her husband, reveals the tragic fate of her family. Her father, Lord Ukichi, was driven to assassinate the Lord out of a sense of duty and loyalty to the realm. However, this act of rebellion has devastating consequences in her life up to this point. But also, her feelings for Blackthorn are connected with guilt and shame as well. She's aware of her duty to Toranaga and the potential consequences of betraying his trust. She struggles with the belief that he's unworthy of happiness due to her family's history and her own perceived failings. This internal conflict creates a deep sense of despair within her life, leading her to believe that death is the only escape from her suffering. <laughs> Mariko's plea for seppuku is not simply an act of desperation but also a way for her to reclaim control over her own life. In a society where women have a little control over their destinies, this is a way to choose her own fate. To die with honor rather than continue living is a way for her to move away from all of this. But as we saw, Toronaga's denied of Mariko's request highlights his own complex understanding of duty and honor. He recognized the depth of her pain and the weight of her past, but he also sees her value as a translator and advisor. Toronaga believed that Mariko still has a role to play in the unfolding political drama. 
and he refused to let her sacrifice herself. Even if it means denying her the release she wants. But her internal struggle is further complicated by the events of previous episodes. Her role as a Black Thorn interpreter and has forced her to confront her own culture and question the belief she has held since childhood. Black Thorn outsider perspective has challenged her in many ways. Her understanding of honor, duty, and the role of woman, the tragic events of her life, is also contribute to her feelings of not feeling worthy and her self-doubt. She holds the burden of her father's legacy as a traitor, believing that she's somehow tainted by his actions. This belief is reinforced by Buntaro's cruelty and the societal expectations placed upon women in feudal Japan. Merikro's internalized sense of shame and guilt makes it difficult for her to accept Blackthorn's admiration and to believe that she's deserving of love and happiness. Despite her desire for death, Merikro's sense of duty and loyalty is also is gonna ultimately prevail. In episode 8, which is gonna be the upcoming episodes, Blackthorn asks the following. Because Blackthorn asks her not to go where she says that her allegiance forbids her to do anything else. This commitment to her lord, despite the potential dangers and her own personal suffering, showcase the depth of her character. Even when faced with the possibility of death, Mariko chooses to honor her obligations and to stand by Taranaga's side. Now something that I didn't discuss in this video and that is how in the novel her fate is even more pronounced, something that we don't see a lot in the book, in the series. Her fate is something that, as we can see, remember that she is part of the dominant Buddhist culture and this is gonna isolate her even more, something that we see in the show with her fate, but I wish that they could explore that more in the series even though that they don't do it a lot but something that we have seen and that is her fate and she's part of the catholic fate so she's gonna feel even more that she's not part of of the society and the way i see it is that she's holding into a persona or a person that is not her she has an identity of what she has to be, but it's not her. Her internal conflict manifests in her struggle to reconcile with her fate as well as her duty to Toronaga that she's meant to play. We know that Toronaga is going to ask her to embrace her destiny and the role that she's in, which is to sacrifice herself in battle. I understand we don't want the character to die, but I see it happening from all of this information and from her past life and all the suffering. And also, I'm looking forward to knowing how Blackthorn is going to react to all of this. Her desire for dad is complex, has a lot of issues rooted in the trauma of her past, the oppression of the present, and the internal conflict between her newfound hope, her deeply ingrained sense of duty and self-doubt. Her plea for seppuku is a powerful testament of her power and her desire for freedom, even as it highlights the limitations in that time. I cannot wait to see Miracle's fate in the upcoming episodes, but what are your thoughts and theories? My name is Christian from Being Premiere, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, one.